One, two. It's working. Excellent. Guess it was tested. So, hello everybody. Um, welcome to my session. Uh, thank you very much for participating. Actually, it's uh, very nice to be in Riga again and also to be in this conference, uh, which is the first time I do this conference in Riga. And it's the first time SQA Days is coming to Europe uh, in this part. So, um, good luck to us all. I want to talk to you about the IoT challenges and some testing aspects. So, <clears throat> um, what I found out is that not only IoT is a new field explored just now, not from a research point of view, but applicative point of view, is also that uh, a lot of people, including testers or test professionals, don't know much about. Um, so this presentation is to show what are the challenges in this field, what's the history, how it developed, and also to show some testing aspects. So, so for each challenge, we have some testing related aspects to that, of course. It's an introduction, so I will not go in deep in things, just to raise some interest and to show you what, what, how big the, the challenge is. That's, that's the goal, okay? If you have some questions later on, we can continue. I'll be here till tomorrow afternoon, available for all of you if you need, yeah? So, uh, working, not working? Yeah. Okay. So, a little bit about me. Three, five past years in IT. Uh, started as development, uh, system analyst, uh, test, uh, uh, system architect, uh, and all this development range of positions. Then moved to testing and quality assurance. Very much involved in the testing community. I'm today the ICQB marketing manager for the working group and also have formed the ICQB in Israel and the SIGIST, which is the Israeli testing forum. Um, a little bit about the company you can read in qualitywise.com with a hyphen inside, but we mainly specialize in agile transition and software and quality and software engineering and testing and stuff all around the world. Okay, so you can check it out later. Some of our customers, some you know today. To start up with some ice breaking, I collect bugs. Don't worry, I have other hobbies. So when I collect bugs, I look for very specific and many sometimes funny ones, sometimes uh, very, um, I don't know, terrible ones for companies. Uh, I think it gives you perspective, um, at least to me. So this is nice, running. It says, uh, I was running 60 kilometers per hour. This is not possible, of course. So I'm not a horse, but it's around the park. Actually, I think it's Latvia. Um, so yeah, three kilometers, 60 kilometers per hour is not possible. This is nice. Uh, so you see I've booked a, a flight and successfully been added. But I got this departure date has already passed. Please choose a departure date within the next 339 days. Very nice. Not efficient. And then I was wondering, hmm, did my flight was booked or not? I don't know. Now I have to phone and I have to waste time and energy in doing that. that those are bugs. So uh, special bugs. Uh, you can see this. Yeah, it's uh, going away for the pub. And navigation gave you a shuttle, a train, another shuttle, another train, a bus, some uh, 1,700 miles for the next pub. This is interesting. Goodbye, wife. I'm going out for four days. I'm going to have a pint. Yeah? So this, this stuff is, is really crazy. About I don't know if your navigation system ever gave you the wrong message, but... Uh, this is a big wrong message. Um, okay, so inside, outside is what I got when I tried to book a flight. Very nice, quiet place. Lots of wind, exit seat. Um, clear view. <laughs> I, I didn't book there, don't worry. Okay. So, um, and, and the last one is the best statement in the world. I showed it a few times in conferences. Milk chocolate, coated raisins. And you see here, 
select asterisk from equipment table. This is a nice one, the nicest I got. Yeah. So uh, it's, a, it's a marketing bug, correct? So what I want to show you is that I think test engineers today cannot focus only on software bugs. So we can see bugs everywhere. Yeah? We have to look for the wrong things others did <laughs> everywhere, I guess. Uh, and my advanced size to give test managers course, one of the guys said to me, you know, Alan, we the testers, we are the garbage collector of the software development process. We get every, all the, sorry ladies, shit that happened, in the end we get it. So we have to do shift left. This, this is one of the explanations of what shift left is, right? Anyway, let's start with um, what we're going to go through today. So understanding I, I, uh, Internet of Things concept. Bless you. So in the introduction, in the history a little bit, and what are the challenges, what are the enablers of IoT, and um, to sum up. I want to start with a, a short video showing uh, a little bit about what IoT is. I think it's perfect. Uh, To show what it is. The Internet of Things is changing much about the world we live in. From the way we drive, to how we make purchases, and even how we get energy for our homes. Sophisticated sensors and chips are embedded in the physical things that surround us, each transmitting valuable data. Data that lets us better understand how these things work and work together. But how exactly do all these devices share such large quantities of data? And how do we put that information to work? Whether we're improving the production of a factory, giving city residents real-time updates on where to park, or monitoring our personal health. It's the common Internet of Things platform that brings this diverse information together and provides the common language for the devices and apps to communicate with each other. The process starts with the devices themselves, which securely communicate with an Internet of Things platform. This platform integrates the data from many devices and applies analytics to share the most valuable data with applications that address industry-specific needs. Let's start with a simple example. A car. After taking a long road trip, Rebecca notices that her check engine light has come on. She knows that she needs to have her car looked at by a mechanic, but is not sure whether it's something minor or something that needs immediate attention. As it turns out, the sensor that triggered Rebecca's check engine light monitors the pressure in her brake line. This sensor is one of many monitoring processes throughout the car, which are constantly communicating with each other. A component in the car called the diagnostic bus gathers the data from all these sensors, then passes it to a gateway in the car. The gateway integrates and sorts the data from the sensors. This way, only the most relevant diagnostic information will be transmitted to the manufacturer's platform. But before sending this organized data, the car's gateway and platform must first register with each other and confirm a secure communication. The platform is constantly gathering and storing thousands of bits of information from Rebecca's car and hundreds of thousands of cars like hers, building an historical record in a secure database. The manufacturer has added rules and logic to the platform. So when Rebecca's car sends a signal that her brake fluid has dropped below a recommended level, the platform triggers an alert in her car. The manufacturer also uses the platform to create and manage applications that solve specific issues. In this case, the manufacturer can deploy an application on the platform called the Asset Management System. This application oversees all of their customers' cars on the road, as well as all the parts in their warehouses. It uses the data from Rebecca's car to offer her a potential appointment time to service her car, directions to the nearest certified dealer, and a coupon for the service. What's more, the app will ensure that Rebecca's brakes are covered under her warranty, that the correct replacement part is ordered, and then sent to the dealership so it is ready when she arrives. But the manufacturer's analysis does not stop there. They have also deployed a continuous engineering application that tracks not only Rebecca's car, but hundreds of thousands of others, looking for ways to improve the design and manufacturing process of the car itself. If the same problem in her brake line crops up in a critical number of other cars, the manufacturer uses applications custom built for the automobile industry to pinpoint the exact problem. They can see if these cars were made at the same factory, used the same parts, or came off the assembly line on the same day. So what do all these pieces add up to? Streamlined inventory management for the dealer, a better, safer car from the manufacturer. And for Rebecca, it means she can be back on the road faster and get to where she's going safely. All thanks to the Internet of Things. Okay, there was the IBM Academy. 
one of the leaders in that field. So uh, to understand, we have consumer products, durable goods, cars, trucks, industrial utility compounds, sensors, and other everyday objects, which can now, under IoT solutions, relate to each other, talk to each other. And uh, they combine an internet-connected and powerful data analytic capabilities together forming a new way of understanding how to do things, uh, influencing our lives, everyday lives, actually. And uh, the challenge is we are going to have 100 billion of them connected by 2025, creating a market of $11 trillion. So no, it's not surprising everybody's looking on IoT. Yeah? So, uh, transforming many aspects in the way we live. We start with a smart home. Who has a smart home? Something about a smart home? Okay. Um, it's, um, well, sometimes it starts with the boiler for heating water that you can use an app to start and stop and program and some other things like, uh, um, well, everything inside concerning uh, energy consumption and uh, efficiency of energy and operating things on the right time or under certain conditions, like if it's hot, turn off the, on the air condition, right, and stuff like that. It, it, it is already in cars that when it's snowing and it's very cold, so you uh, set up what, what is the time you want to go to work and the car will heat the seaters just 10 minutes before and unfreeze the, the ice uh, 20 minutes before, etc. So it happens already in those uh, areas. Yeah? So this is in the uh, smart home area, all connected to the cloud via the internet, of course. And you have the healthcare, you have wearables today. Um, it's very developed, this uh, area. And you have uh, a lot of sensors and devices on uh, elderly people, improving the quality of life, uh, monitoring all the time, and the alerts going to the doctor, they have emergency calls, etc. So it's really helping to do a lot of stuff. Uh, and uh, it's easier now because, uh, at, at, well, previously you had to uh, keep uh, um, after surgery patients for monitoring in the hospital. Today you can give those devices and release them home, which is a lot better. Um, we have smart cities. Uh, this is a very complex, a lot of uh, IoT systems working together, synchronized, energy consumption, bridges, roads, um, fire, de fire department, police, parking, whatever. Everything is connected in, in, in the idea of a smart city. And there are cities around the world which started this project a few years ago and they're very advanced. I think Berlin is in Germany, one of the cities of, of going smart, and some other uh, cities in the world. Uh, and we have this in agriculture, of course. So monitoring systems for growth, for plants, improving conditions, so the, 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 the problems we have with insects, etc., doesn't happen anymore, or is uh, removed. Uh, improving the, the money the farmers get from uh, one kilometer of, of crop, right? And, and uh, also sometimes making the crop grow faster and maybe more stronger, so stronger, uh, which reduces the food cost for us as the end user. Yeah? So all is good. And this is just an example from, from Israel, where I live. And... Uh, helping strawberries grow. So you see the strawberries are uh, grown in the air. Uh, so there's no need for soil so much. And also if it's not in the soil, uh, there is less pesticides. And uh, so it's, uh, you have uh, IoT monitoring the sweetness as well. Uh, monitoring uh, the humidity and the watering, uh, how humid and the watering uh, system. And you have also monitoring for the light that needs to come, but also controlled bug, bugs coming in. It's closed doors with a special net around it. Can use organic pesticide, if at all, because it's grown differently. And of course, you can get faster and, and bigger 
yield and the cost is going down, etc. So this is from one of the trips I took a few years back. So it's a, it has to do with everything in our lives. Now, who started it was a guy, Kevin Ashton, in 1999. And uh, uh, he wanted to describe a system with which objects in physical world could be connected to the internet by sensors. He started by, he was working for a, cons a consumer, a big consumer, and he wanted to connect radio frequency identification tags, well, some of those you know in the current life, right? All those key tags where you have an app and you can find your keys or you can find something you, you hook it to, etc. But at those days, they were looking more like this or, you know, this one probably from the shops that you have this uh, sticked into the cloth and when you go, they take it off or stuff like that. These are radio frequency identification tags, all of them. And um, he was uh, trying to count and track goods on the production line without any human intervention, intervention. And each product had this tag on it. Yeah. So this is uh, many years ago. So it's like 19 years ago. Uh, of course, everything has to be internet connected. And today we look on many other things. And we call it Internet of Things because almost everything can be hooked to a sensor and transmit data and be linked to an analytic system via the cloud uh, using big, big uh, data centers, etc. So, the 70s, we started with remotely monitoring meters and electrical uh, grid, and it looked a little bit like this, and it made things a little bit easier at that time. In the 90s, wireless technology, I started to develop the machine-to-machine -machine protocols, uh, still not IP-based, but still equipment monitoring uh, operation for things, purpose-built networks, so dedicated for a certain domain. Yeah. And uh, then, at the late 90s, the first internet toaster came. Uh, it was uh, in one of the universities who tried to connect things to the network and report their status, get commands maybe, and stuff like that. And eventually you see the soda machine by Karen Malone, the coffee pot by the University of Cambridge, etc., etc. They all did experiments in the uh, late 90s. Yeah? So, like 18 years ago. The enablers for the recent developers development of IT uh, consists of six enablers. Uh, the first one is universal connectivity, so low cost, high speed, network connected, licensed, unlicensed wireless networks, uh, which create our universe, really connecting everything, or the possibility to connect everything. The second one is the widespread adoption of IP, that means everything can be operated and connected via IP. Yeah? And with the coming IPv6, of course. We'll speak about that. The third is computing economics. And we witness the computing power growing very, very much while the price is getting low at the same time and low power consumption, which comes from maybe Another factor, which is minimization, which we'll talk about. Yeah, 0.22 nanotechnology and stuff like that used in the chip uh, area and some other stuff. Yeah, so miniaturization, manufacturing today is able to reduce the size. Yeah, this is something we know that happened. And <laughs> today, the state of the art iPhone or Galaxy, Samsung, whatever, it's really including so much inside, which is extremely amazing. Um, at one of the innovative um, talks, there was a doctor coming, and he um, is developing with a group of scientists a sweetener, which will be 
with uh, very good parameters on the uh, glucose side, on baking side, so heat, etc. And he is um, analyzing molecular m molecules and uh, analysis of how they will react. And he brought this one thick laptop, like this, very big. And we asked him at the end, why do you need this machine? He said, well, this is actually a server compound into one laptop. And I'm doing such hard, heavy, complex analysis that it can chew up in a very short time. And if I had to bring the server, <laughs> I couldn't. So this is how it goes, minimalization. OK. Um, advance of uh, data analytics today, new algorithms. You all uh, heard from probably and will hear more about AI and stuff. Uh, in the cloud, which enables to aggregate, correlate, anal analyze data fast with growing uh, transaction uh, volumes, uh, which helps us to do faster job on near real-time uh, data. Yeah. Maybe the last one, rise of the cloud computing. Now cloud is commodity. Um, seven, eight years ago, you heard cloud everything. Everything who wanted to be hype called himself cloud something. Yeah? Today, you don't hear the cloud word anymore because it's really under the hood of the engine. Yes, it's inside the car. You don't need it because you, well, you need, it's, it's an engine everywhere. You don't talk about it so much. It's no big deal anymore. But everything runs on cloud. So. So, going for the challenges. Um, too, ma too many IoT platforms. So, <coughs> devices have their own unique hardware. And I urge you to go to the closest or the uh, earliest um, publication, if you have here in Riga area or where you come from, uh, to a, to a one-day conference of vendors who provide IoT devices. I'm not a real uh, hardware guy, but I went to such an event because it interests me to see how these devices look like. Yeah? To touch, you know, to touch the real thing, to see how it goes in the spec and what it can do, and which different uh, operating system it has, and which different interfaces it has. So um, very unique and very diversified, many variants. Uh, there's no single standard yet. It's all open. Yeah. Um, which means testing is a problem, or a challenge, should I say. Yeah? Uh, even if you work two years in IoT in one company, you go to the other, different hardware, different software, different challenge. Yeah? And should I say, no real good tools today. So, yes, uh, we must be able to select the best set because the combinations become really more, more large than what we're used to. Yeah? Okay. Um, also about data for testing. We need to collect data for testing, large quantities of data for testing. So that's become a challenge as well. Communication protocols. So four communication models. Um, in, I think, 2015 only, um, the um, uh, Internet Architect Architecture Board, this is how they call themselves, uh, IAB, released an uh, architecture document describing the four communication models for IoT devices, device to device, device to cloud, device to gateway, and uh, backend and uh, claiming that these, if accepted and adopted, will be the way that we can standardize this IoT world, okay? You can read more about those protocols and how they fit, but uh, you can see they are related and complete a full picture, even if just reading the headline. And, uh, um, From testing perspective, device interoperability and open standards are really key, 
But it means also we'll need to know better the new protocols. We'll need also to work with them and uh, see how they relate to each other and how they work together. Uh, going to IPv6, um, IPv4 supports 4.3 billion. As I showed you the numbers, it's going to be a lot more. With IPv6, the number is 2 to the power of 128, 30, 340 trillion, trillion, trillion addresses. Expectations are 100 billion by 2025, which means we are OK. We don't really want to repeat bug 2000 again. Yes. So it can serve us for a good amount of years, I guess, with these numbers. And you can see here by 2020, what's the, the per domain, how many devices we will have. Yeah? 1.8 billion devices in a smart city around the world. Amazing. OK, and guess what? Testing aspects, a lot of devices to test. So uh, nothing else to be said. We need to check how it has volumes of stuff in a larger scale. Yeah? So also from protocols point of view, um, more common now for the, I, actually for the IoT, you see the MQTT um, and some others. And this is just a correlation table, the current versus the expected. Uh, here you just see the focus change from TCP and UDP to UDP and TCP. So it's best fit for IoT world, that's all. And we're going to uh, have some data link protocols, yeah, which we have long range, long range. Uh, GSM, you all know from the phone. Wi-Fi, you all know. LTM, it's LTMC something. Machine, um, machine telecommunication protocol, something like that. And uh, Sigfox, again, it's, it's just protocols. Yeah. Some have stopped because uh, they uh, require a lot of bandwidth and cost a lot, so stopped and redesigned. And still in progress. So high latency, low bandwidth, and it's most popular. OK? Most popular. Now, the thing also with IoT devices is they need to be also be working in a very low power consumption, right? Because you put an IoT sensor somewhere that can hold for years with the battery it has. So this is also a challenge. Yeah. Some of the IoT devices like that are in places not reachable so much on big antennas, somewhere in the university we forgot where. You know, things like that. It happened to me once with a university. I came to do some consulting. They had a server like that. It has an IP address. They don't know where it is. It's working. It's hooked to the electricity, and that's it. When the power is off and on, it boots again. But that's it. They don't know where it is. <laughs> Very crazy. OK. So we need testing tools to support these protocols and APIs and all this surrounding environment which is a new technical challenge. Some new attacks and threats on security. So this is just to show security pending compared to device growth. Um, uh, this is by 2018. Number of IT devices. And here you have um, worldwide of security spending. So how much we spend. But these numbers are important. By 2020, 25 of enterprise attacks will be involving IoT. This is a quarter of every attack there is in the world. 10% of the budget will be allocated to IoT, so trillions. And implementation will use cloud security, 50%, which is really big numbers. The adoption rate is important. Why? Because we want to know if we should look into it or not. Is it worth it? Okay. Yeah, so some attacks are 70% uh, of IT devices currently vulnerable to security issues. 
after investigating most of them. Yeah, this is what the research says. It means security holes. It, uh, the transfer of data happens. Deployed in massive scale, we have to check the points of vulnerability, and this is a challenge. Also, devices, they are homogenic, so they look alike. They are constructed alike, which means if you hack one, you hack them all. This is problematic. They have the same operating system, the same features, the same code. Um, OK, let's skip uh, this. Device diversity, just the picture is enough. <laughs> Device and application diversity, which means we need stronger testing capabilities, we need stronger tools, we need stronger platforms uh, to test that. Because performance testing is one of the biggest things here. And um, those devices always need to give above user expectations. OK? So um, fast moving data. Don't have to tell you much about it. Test account different condition. Understand devices, performance testing tools, monitoring is needed. Privacy and legal is also becoming an issue. So we have to secure the data, and we have to test it for being secured. And for the area of IoT to be adopted, we need trust, trust of the users. Until not recently, we were reluctant, or we didn't want to use the internet for our bank actions. Now it's more secured. In many places, it's the law that the bank needs to secure it, and it's their responsibility. Now we have trust, and now we are using it. The same will go with IoT. We need to be trusting the systems. Yeah? And that means uh, a lot of uh, security uh, tests, uh, understanding uh, encryption methods, uh, going through networks and protocols, and uh, these are legal aspects as well. The Surveillance Act, yeah? Like everybody's, a lot of data is collected, even today. But imagine that every device will send data. It means a lot of data will be collected on us, a lot more. Yeah? And that's the border between privacy and advancement is shaky a little bit. Where the border, where the balance is. Yeah? And we have to give it a thought with the uh, IoT. So. Um, let's uh, have a short uh, history um, video, and then I think we're done with this part, and you can um, come up with the questions. I think it's this one, but also... No. Yes, okay. How do I start? Maybe by doing like this? Yes, how do I start? Mm -hmm. No, I want to start the presentation. That's all. How do I start? Is it uh, is it running? Uh, it's running all the time. How do I start it? Wait. OK. Yes. Let's see if we find it. No, we don't. <laughs> this was to begin with. <laughs> now let's go for.
ok just have to don't don't just I want this to go Yeah. Volume, volume. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much.